These are 181 One Piece facts starting with the time Zoro's swords turned into humans. Do you remember the time when Oda drew weapons as humans? You see in SBS volume, Oda was asked how Zoro's swords would look if they were humans, and Oda delivered. This is how Waro Ichibonji, Shisui, and Sandai Kitetsu will look as humans. Oda also said that each weapon has its own personality. Like when Oda first released the early designs for the Straw Hats, everyone was shocked, especially the way Nami and Chopper were designed. I mean, just look at them. Their designs were way darker. Chopper has a cigarette in his mouth and looks way more human. A lot less cute. And Nami is half robot. She has a mechanical arm and a giant axe. We know that Luffy has a big heart, but what he also has is a big appetite. Luffy's favorite food, as you probably know, is all kinds of meat. But do you know Nami's favorite food? Well, her favorite food is mikans, which are Japanese mandarins. Both Bellamir and Nami's sister Nojiko's favorite food is also mikans. On the other hand, her least favorite food is orangette, and just under that falls ice cream. Nojiko and Nami even have more similarities. Have you ever noticed how Nami wears this bracelet? You see, it's never shown in the anime or manga, but Nojiko actually gave her bracelet to Nami the morning on the day they left Nami's town. Oda's actually later confirmed this since everyone was so curious. What I'm curious about, however, is this outfit. Doesn't it look familiar? Yeah, Nami's outfit in this scene is the same as the one Robin wore in the Alabasta arc where we first met her. But the thing is, this scene happened in Logue Town, which was way before Robin was introduced. You might think Oda's foreshadowing ends there, but no. Right after this, the prototype outfit for Boa Hancock appears almost 500 episodes before she was introduced. And did you know that Zoro has had two different wanted posters for his 60 million berry bounty? In the original version, he had less dirt on his face and the background wasn't as green as in the newer one. And as if that wasn't enough Zoro mistakes, Shonen Jumps mistakenly translated Zoro's bounty from 1 billion 111 million berries into 1 billion 100 million 1,100 berries. These Zoro mistakes were pretty crazy, but this Shanks one might be even crazier. Remember in the early days of the anime, in the scene where this dumb kid fell in the water and Shanks lost his arm when trying to save him? Some fans picked up on the fact that Shanks at this point had sailed the Grand Line with the Pirate King and was very strong, but yet wasn't able to defeat the same Sea King that Luffy managed to beat with one punch when he was 17. Shanks could have easily just used armament hockey to prevent him from losing the arm. These were just the small mistakes that slipped through production, but this next mistake is just too hard to miss. During the Foxy arc, when we thought things couldn't get worse, this scene happened. There were two Zoros. This was either just a big mistake, or Zoro's just practicing his Shadow Clone Jutsu. But Zoro isn't the only character that can use Shadow Clone Jutsu, because Luffy might be able to do it as well. Here, when Luffy is about to throw a punch at Mihawk, his hat falls off his head, but it also somehow stays on at the same time. I think Oda had a hard time deciding whether it should fall off or stay on. You know what's not so hard to decide? Subscribing. Subscribe now to find the One Piece. The mistakes are not limited to clothing, because they somehow gave some people extra body parts. Believe it or not, I thought Nami had a mutation that we just didn't know about as in this scene, Nami's right foot has six toes. Fortunately, this was just a mistake and she was meant to have five toes on her right foot. Nami isn't the only One Piece character that has multiple limbs. Remember the girl Luffy met on the Amazon Lily Island? Well, in this scene, she was animated with an extra leg. Another animation mistake that blew my mind is the one with Frankie. In this scene, he's seen with his shirt drawn all the way up to his neck. Not only that, but he also has it stitched onto his skin. But the mistakes aren't limited to the animation because there's a ton of writing mistakes as well. For instance, in this scene when Kinemon's head is hiding in a bucket of water, which makes no sense since he's a Devil Fruit user. But this isn't the only time Devil Fruit users have defied the laws of One Piece. Because in this scene, Boa Hancock is seen taking a bath with a majority of her body covered with water even though she's a Devil Fruit user. Now you probably already know that this red nosed man treats his crew members pretty badly. But the manga version of Buggy is so much more evil. When he first gets introduced in the anime, there's a scene where he's choking one of his crew members because Buggy thought he had insulted his nose. Well, in the manga, Buggy does something way worse. He instead orders his other crew member to blow him to smithereens. Buggy isn't the only person who got annoyed easily, because Bellamy might be even worse. You see, when Bellamy was playing cards with Roshio, when he noticed that Roshio was cheating in the game of cards, he decided to throw him out the window after shooting him. If you think this is bad, then wait till you hear the manga version. In the manga, Bellamy not only shoots him, but also sets him on fire. But the changes that were made to the anime were not only censorship, there were tons of other differences. For instance, the beginning of the anime is different from how it is in the manga. The manga starts off by showing Luffy as a kid with Shanks, whereas the anime starts off with Luffy and Kobe in Alvita's ship. Which way do you prefer? Another change made is the addition of Sabo's backstory after the end of the Dressrosa arc. In the manga, Sabo's backstory isn't there. Oda actually explained that he gave the creators of the anime the draft of Sabo's backstory to specifically include in the show because he didn't have time to write it into the manga. 
Did you know that Sanji didn't used to be called Sanji? His name was actually Naruto originally. However, Eiichiro Oda decided to change the name after he learned about the newly created series Naruto, featuring the main character Naruto Uzumaki. By the way, Naruto is a type of cured fish surimi produced in Japan, fitting for the one character with swirly eyebrows. You see, Oda had some pretty crazy plans for Nami's original look. Well, I did some digging and found out that this was the original plan for Nami. Not only does she have a mechanical arm, but she also has a giant battle axe with her. If you look even closer, you see that she has multiple scars on her as well. On the note of things that Oda had originally planned, he had decided that the story of One Piece would end within five years, with the main antagonist being the Emperors, but his plans would be extended mostly due to his creation of the Warlords of the Sea. This has also resulted in One Piece being the longest running manga series because of its popularity and support from its fans. From 1997 to 2014, around 321 million manga copies of One Piece were sold. Did you know that Luffy is a model? That's right! He once appeared in an IRL fashion magazine. Nonno is a men's fashion magazine, and in 2008, Luffy became the first manga character to model for the cover of a magazine. The connection isn't as odd as it might seem, as Nonno is published by Shueisha, the same company that publishes Weekly Shonen Jump. However, this is nothing compared to the time when this tattoo on Ace's back changed. In the manga, Ace originally had a symbol on his back that represents well-being. However, this symbol can be connected to some other not-so-nice things as well. That's why this later got changed into anime into this. Oda also decided to change it in the manga later on. Someone you probably wouldn't think of as a dark character is Sanji. But let me tell you, the anime has censored some pretty crazy Sanji scenes. Remember this girl was kidnapped and the Straw Hats tried saving her? Well, during this arc in the manga, Sanji is caught asking Nami this. When I read the manga, I was in shock after reading that. Luckily, this was changed in the anime to him getting furious over people treating a lady this way. Let's just say I prefer the less dark version of Sanji. Now, most of you probably already know this, but what I'm sure you didn't know is that Nami originally did didn't exist. Well, in Oda's original version of One Piece, Romance Dawn, Nami didn't exist. Instead, there were these two girls, Anne and Silk, who appeared in Romance Dawn version 1 and 2. In the end, Oda decided to go with the navigator we all know, and Nami's role as the ship navigator is perfect for her. But what if pirating wasn't an option? Oda actually told us that in an alternate universe, she would live in Sweden as a childcare worker. Why Sweden? That we don't know, but all we know is that she has a soft spot for children. Oda has really thought of everything for the Straw Hats. Like, he even drew how Nami would look like when she got older. Here is Nami in the good timeline as a 40 and 60 year old. This timeline ended pretty well for her, but Oda has actually drawn her in a bad timeline as well. Here is her in a bad timeline as a 40 and 60 year old. Not a pretty sight to say the least. Luffy loves food, and I mean really loves food. He really isn't picky about what he decides to eat as long as he gets to eat as much as he wants. So it was surprising when Oda said that there's something that he doesn't like. His least favorite food is cherry pie served in Mucktown. What's interesting is that Blackbeard's favorite food, on the other hand, is cherry pie. Maybe it's Oda's way of showing the contrast between the two pirates. You probably knew that Oda has drawn what the Straw Hats will look like in the future, but what you probably didn't know is that Oda has drawn what would happen in a dark timeline as well. This is Luffy in the dark timeline. He didn't even become the King of Pirates. Zoro, on the other hand, looks way worse in the dark timeline. Let's just say neither of them achieved their dreams. Speaking of dreams, there's a pretty crazy connection between dreams and why Luffy doesn't kill his enemies. The reason for why Luffy doesn't kill his enemies is because he believes that destroying their dreams is something way worse than death. We all know that Nami doesn't have a devil fruit power, but have you ever wondered what devil fruit power she would get if she ever ate one? Well, Oda actually replied with a shocking answer. Nami would get the powers of the Goro Goro no Mi. Why the Goro Goro no Mi? Well, it's because Nami is closely related to lightning power, which makes this a perfect match. You know what else is a perfect match? These personal Jolly Rogers Oda created for Nami. The left one is pre-time skip, and the right one is after the time skip. These Jolly Rogers really tell you about Nami's crazy obsession with money. Yeah, Nami has a crazy obsession with money. So crazy that she was willing to do a cup noodle advertisement. Trust me, this advertising is the craziest thing you'll see today, except for this video, of course. In the ad, Nami is trying to balance her work and school life in order to become a navigator. Her boss, of course, is Arlong. And to make her feel better during her struggles, Luffy gives her cup noodles. But there's actually another reason behind her obsession with money. You see, Nami has been stealing money from pirates ever since she was a kid in order to save her village from Arlong. Well, this habit of stealing is stuck with her as she continues to steal even after Luffy freed her village. The famous fashion brand Armani has designed clothes for Zoro and the rest of the Straw Hats. This was done for the release of the One Piece film Z, and their clothes were designed by Armani designers and were chosen by Oda himself. When people think of pirates, they mostly think of One Piece. But did you know that pirates actually exist? They exist in the South China Sea and off the coast of Somalia, as well as in other parts of the world. The Somali pirates seemed to like One Piece because one of their ships had the Jolly 
Roger of Shanks crew from One Piece. On the topic of real life pirates, do you remember the time when Blackbeard gained the powers of Gura Gura no Mi, which gave him the ability to create earthquakes? After the release of this episode, Japan actually suffered one of its most destructive natural disasters of all time. An earthquake with a magnitude of 9.0 happened on the Pacific coast of Tohoku, which triggered a massive tsunami. The rivalry between Zoro and Sanji is one of the most iconic things about Zoro and One Piece in general. The two are always at each other's throats since they first met. But I bet you didn't know that he's never addressed Sanji by his actual name in the original Japanese version of the manga. That's right. Never. Now let's move on from One Piece and on to Dragon Ball. Believe it or not, but Oda has gotten tons of inspiration from Dragon Ball. He himself stated this during an interview with the creator of Dragon Ball. This is very noticeable in Luffy's design. For instance, both Luffy and Goku have messy black hair and love to eat food. The two mangas, One Piece and Dragon Ball, have even had a crossover episode called cross -a -poach. Do you remember this scene on the island with the two giants when Zoro was about to get turned into a wax figure? Well, during this scene when Nami and Vivi were confused about why he was making such a weird pose, Zoro actually mentioned that if he was about to be turned into a statue, then this is the pose he'd like to have. Luckily for him, there's actually a statue of him with the exact same pose in Japan. I'd like to visit one day. Every devil fruit is covered in a swirly design. This is done to distinguish them from other fruits. But did you notice this hidden Easter egg? In the crossover episode, Luffy was seen flying the golden Nimbus of Goku, something that only someone with a pure heart can do. We already knew Luffy was pure hearted, but damn, this fact blew me away. Every One Piece fan's dream right now is probably to know the ending of this masterpiece, and only two people in the entire world know it. One of them, of course, being Oda himself, and the other one being Hinati Fujinami, a kid from Japan who was suffering from lung cancer. He got the chance to make a wish from the Make-A-Wish Foundation where he asked Oda if he could tell him how One Piece would end, and Oda personally visited him to reveal the One Piece ending in private. Another pretty dark easter egg I'm sure you noticed is the secret Joker reference in One Piece. Rosinante's act of burning down a hospital where doctors refused to treat Law was similar to a scene from The Dark Knight where the Joker burned down a hospital. I bet you didn't notice this one. Nami's poses in both these scenes even resemble Boa and Robin. And have you ever noticed how Nami is posing in all her wanted posters? The fact that Nami is posing isn't weird in itself, but literally no one else in the One Piece universe poses in their wanted photos. Well, according to Oda, what happened was a random government official walked up to Nami and asked to take a picture and told her it was for his magazine, when in reality, it was for the wanted poster. I'm not sure how Nami falls for it every time. Someone else that fell is Oda. Not fell down the stairs, but fell in love. And with who? Nami. Well, not really. You see, during Jump Festa 2002, model and actress Chiaki Inaba cosplayed as Nami, and Oda fell in love with her. Oda and her are now married. Pretty crazy, if you ask me. Moving on from Oda and on to Chopper. Have you ever noticed how Luffy wasn't the one who invited him? If we go back in time to when Nami was sick during the Drum Island arc, we see that Nami is actually the one who first invited Chopper to join the crew. Which makes sense, since we know Nami has a special place for kids in her heart. If you're a fan of One Piece, then you most likely know that Zoro has two names. He's often referred to as Zolo instead of Zoro in some English versions of the anime and manga. Well, there are two possible explanations for the use of the name Zolo. The first is that Zoro may have been considered too close to Zoro, a copyrighted character who may have inspired Zoro's name. The second is that the Japanese language does not distinguish between L and R sounds. Oda's intention was probably Zoro, not Zolo. But have you ever noticed that almost all of his attacks are named after sushi? This was revealed in a chapter of the SBS. For instance, in his technique nigiri, toro samon. The pun is that nigiri is a type of sushi, toro means fatty, and sabon is a salmon. We know that Oda is a great artist, but Luffy might be even greater than him. Luffy once made a weird sketch of a shipwright that shares striking similarities to Frankie before Frankie was even introduced to the story. Have you ever wondered what Luffy would look like in real life? Well, if you haven't yet learned about it, Netflix is making a live action adaption of One Piece and this is the actor for Luffy. Big Mom had 43 husbands, 46 sons, and 39 daughters, even though two of her sons, Moscato and Opera, appeared to have died at her hands. She's been giving birth for 42 years straight. No wonder Oda Sensei named her Big Mom. <laughs> We all know how much Sanji loves smoking, but have you ever wondered where this all started? You see, in the manga, Sanji develops his habit while still a young child working at the Baradier restaurant. Zeph, of course, tells him to stop, but Sanji insists that smoking will transform him into a man. This was likely taken out of the anime since they didn't want kids seeing it. Speaking of Sanji's addiction, did you know what his favorite cigarette brand is? Well, Oda revealed it in an SBS that Sanji smokes cigarettes from the brands King Ground and Death. Kids, if you're watching this, don't you dare touch a cigarette. I also noticed that Nami has a special place in her heart for both money and Mandarin origin. 
languages. And you see, this is funny since the Mandarin symbols prosperity in Japan, which means she likes money and more money. Did you know that Zoro actually met the creator of his sword Enma years before he got the sword? In the Shimotsuki village, the village he trained and grew up in, he met Shimotsuki Kozaburo, the creator of Enma. Kozaburo is also the father of the owner of the dojo that he used to train in, which means that Koina is the granddaughter of Enma's creator. Pretty crazy, right? In the past 22 years, One Piece has had six character popularity polls. For the first four popularity polls, Zoro placed in second place every single time, which means he was in second place for over a decade. Ichiro, Oda, and Ace both celebrate their birthdays on the same day, which falls on New Year's Eve, but the sad part is, is that one of them is dead. We all know Oda is on a different level when it comes to hiding Easter eggs in the show. Just look at this crazy Easter egg hidden in Nami's name. You see, Nami's birthday is on the 3rd of July, which sounds pretty normal until you realize that 7 in Japanese is Na, and 3 in Japanese is Mi. Oda really is built different. Someone else that is built differently is, of course, Nami. We all know that she's pretty smart, but what you probably didn't know is that she has the third highest IQ in all of the East Blue. Oda did confirm this, but he never confirmed the actual number. Who do you think has a higher IQ than her? As smart and independent as she is, she has fears just like any other Straw Hats. Her biggest fear being bugs, specifically spiders. Zoro is one of the two people who have successfully slain a dragon. The only other person to have killed a dragon is Ryuma. Furthermore, both Zoro and Ryuma defeated their prospective dragons in similar ways by decapitating them while in midair. Ace is the only known pirate to reject the position of a Shichibukai, and has also had the biggest known bounty at the time of his death of 550 million berries. Moving on. Did you know that Luffy is the only pirate known to have ever escaped all three of the world government facilities? The three are Any Slobby, Impel Down, and Marine Ford. Moving on to this weird guy. Did you know that he's the only person in One Piece connected to all three major organizations in the manga? Most characters are connected to one or two different organizations. The only person connected to the pirates, the Revolutionary Army, the world government at the same time is Bartholomew Kuma. I thought only his name was weird. On the topic of names, have you ever wondered where Chopper's name came from? Well, Dr. Herlock revealed to Chopper that he was named Tony Tony Chopper because he's a reindeer with fine antlers that could chop down trees. You might know that Nami is extremely smart, but have you ever wondered how tall she is? Well, Nami is 5 foot 7, or 170 centimeters tall. For reference, Luffy is 174 centimeters tall, Usopp is 176, Zoro is 181, and Robin is 188. Jinbei is by far the tallest in the crew, coming in at 301 centimeters tall. There are multiple instances where Zoro has been featured outside of One Piece. For example, this Easter egg in The Simpsons where Homer Bard is cosplaying as him, or in episode 5 of the webtoon anime adaption Tower of God, where this character is dressed like Zoro before the time skip. Luffy's X-shaped scar on his chest came during the Marine Ford arc when Akainu gravely injured both Luffy and Jinbei. This X has been on his chest ever since the time skip and is clearly here to stay for the rest of the series. However, did you know that Oda hinted that Luffy would get an injury like this far before Marine Ford? Back in episode 223 of the anime, Zoro ended up attacking Luffy against his will. Luffy got slashed by Zoro across the chest in an X shape. This injury healed, but it wasn't long before Luffy got a permanent scar in the exact same shape. This was a clue that very few people realized until later. You probably realize that Luffy gives everything he needs a nickname. However, have you noticed how he calls his crewmates by their actual names? Well, there's actually a reason for this. Oda has explained that this is because Luffy doesn't really care about remembering people's names, so he gives them nicknames. But when someone becomes his crewmate, he finally remembers their name. My personal favorite nickname is Cabbage. We all know that Katakuri loves to eat donuts, and you might not think that's dark, but trust me, it gets dark. Have you ever noticed the scarf he wears around his mouth? Well, the reason for it is to cover the fact that he tore his mouth open when he tried fitting as many donuts as possible in it. One Piece somehow managed to make donuts dark. We all know that Sanji is a massive simp, but he might be even more of a simp than you think. This guy actually helps Nami paint her nails every month. She can do it herself, but she'd rather use her hands to draw maps. Listen, he might be pretty dumb, but he wasn't all always the charmingly unintelligent character that he is today. In the first version of Romance Dawn that Oda came up with, he was way smarter than he currently is, and the second version was even dumber. The current version of Luffy falls somewhere in the middle. Which version of him do you prefer? The incredible handwork of Oda is the reason we're able to watch such a masterpiece of a show. He works on One Piece day and night along with his other editors, but the sad reality is that these men actually have to give up everything for this. As he once said, they need to be ready to, and I quote, die for One Piece if they want to work with him. I'm pretty sure Oda wasn't joking when he said that. And the dark secrets don't end there, because One Piece's 4Kids version has made some pretty dark changes to the show. Like the time they decided to remove guns in the anime completely. I guess 4Kids thought the guns 
scenes were a bit too violent, but they could have at least changed it to something that makes sense. Like, in this scene where Helmopo is threatening Kobe with a gun, they changed it to this. What even is this? They also changed every other gun shown in the show to toy guns instead. I guess that makes a little more sense. Something that makes absolutely no sense, however, is 4Kid's decision to change this kid's food. In the early days of One Piece, there's a scene where this little girl gives rice balls to Zoro, and apparently 4Kid's thought this scene was too dark for little kids to see, so they decided to change it from rice balls to cookies. 4Kid's really ruined their reputation with the 4Kid's One Piece, but they even went as far as changing Sanji's cigarette to something less dark. They decided to change it to a lollipop of all things. I guess I can somewhat understand this, but still. 4Kid's might be trying to make the anime less dark, but there's actually a death in One Piece that was actually made far worse than the 4Kid's version. You remember the adopted mother of Nami, Belmare? In the Japanese version of the One Piece anime and manga, Belmare is shot in the head by Arlong, but in the 4Kid's dub, she's imprisoned for life and ends up dying a way slower death in prison all alone. Which I think is way darker than the original version. And 4Kid's aren't the only one that have censored moments in the show, because even the normal anime has censored some of the darker manga moments. We all know about Bartolomeo's obsession with Luffy and the lengths he's willing to go for him. Like the time this guy in the anime insulted Luffy and Bartolomeo got so angry that he decided to grab his tongue. This may not seem like anything serious until you read the manga. In the manga, Bartolomeo grabs his tongue and slices it. Crazy how far Bartolomeo is willing to go. But trust me, Owner Zeff went even further. Remember this scene in the anime where Owner Zeff loses his leg trying to save Sanji from drowning? Yeah, this great moment in the anime actually took a pretty dark turn in the manga. In the manga, Owner Zeff chops off his own leg in order to survive starvation. Owner Zeff was definitely hungry, but these guys must have been hungrier because why else would they be pointing forks at Sanji? Remember this scene? Well, this scene in the manga was way worse. You see, when Don Krieg's men were starving, Sanji decided to make food for them, but the Baradier employees didn't agree. So instead of pointing kitchen equipment like in the anime, they pulled out guns instead. Maybe they were hungry as well. Zoro was also hungry, but not for food, for blood. When I was researching facts for this video, I noticed that Nami is a fashionista. I mean, she wears a new outfit almost every arc, but taking a closer look into her outfits, I noticed that she wears clothes with four letters written on them. For example, in Whiskey Peak, Nami is seen wearing a shirt that spells mode. She's also been seen with words like evil, gold, and mace on her shirt. I'm still trying to figure out the reason for this. If you live in Japan, please ask Oda this in the SBS. And if for some reason you've ever wondered what Nami would look like if she was a boy, don't worry, because Oda has actually drawn her as one. This is the gender swapped version of Nami. She looks pretty similar to the normal Nami, but this isn't the case for some of the other straw hats. Zoro looks the most different in my opinion. His girl version might have even shorter hair than he does normally. Here are some of the other straw hats. Ever wondered what Nami's favorite island and season are? Her favorite island is the Kyuka Island, and her favorite season is summer. Well, now we know where Nami would spend her holiday. Not a bad choice, to be honest. On the note of the original version of One Piece, did you know that the Jolly Roger that the Straw Hats currently use isn't the first one? In the first two versions of the manga, the Jolly Roger actually looked like this. Pretty crazy, right? The other day I was thinking about how different Straw Hats autographs would look like. Crazy as it sounds, Oda has actually created their autographs for us. Like Nami's autograph would say her name with her tattoo. Here are the autographs from the other Straw Hats. In the original Japanese version of One Piece, Zoro is voiced by Kazuya Nakai as an adult and Megumi Urawa as a child. However, in the dubbed version of One Piece, he's known for having more voice actors than any other Straw Hat. As a kid, he's voiced by four different people and as an adult by three different people. In an alternate universe, Luffy would be a firefighter from Brazil. Oda said that being a firefighter would be the perfect job for him because he's so brave. He also stated that Luffy would be Brazilian in real life. What if I told you that Luffy is actually a great swimmer? Now you're probably thinking, how could this be true? Because Luffy is a devil fruit user and can't swim, right? This is true. But before he ate the devil fruit, Shanks and Luffy had a conversation where it was confirmed that Luffy was indeed a great swimmer before having eaten his devil fruit. We all know how Luffy's straw hat is very important to him, but have you noticed how Nami actually wears it quite often? Well, Nami is actually the only person Luffy lends out his straw hat to. It just shows how close they are as friends, but something not so close is their popularity rankings. You see, in the One Piece popularity poll, Luffy actually came in first place while Nami came in third. Nami placed higher than both Sanji and law, which honestly is pretty surprising. If you look up to Nami, make sure to get good sleep because she actually gets a solid 8 hours every night. She sleeps from 11pm to 7am every day, which is admittedly way better than my sleep schedule. <coughs> 5 hours of sleep, but I try, therefore I should not be judged. I'm sure these facts probably bl Remember how Mihawk was introduced to the story? He sliced Don Krieg's ship in half seemingly because of his nap getting disturbed. Well this is extremely similar to how Zoro was reintroduced after the time skip. He cut a galleon in half because because his nap got interrupted. 
Pretty funny, right? He also has the highest known starting bounty for a native of the East Blue, with a 60 million berry bounty, surpassing Luffy's initial bounty of 30 million berries. This does not count Sanji's 77 million berry bounty, however, since he's technically from the North Blue. You know how Zoro lost his eye after the time skip? Yeah, Oda actually intended that he would be a one-eyed character at the start of the show, but waited for the time skip to take away his eye in the end. But this isn't the only thing that changed. For example, in the original edition of chapter 598, Zoro's scar was depicted on his right eye. In chapter 599, Oda said that this was a mistake and that it should have been on his left eye. Also in chapter 698, Zoro is seen with a thick cross-shaped scar on his chest that looked exactly like the one Luffy got from Akainu, rather than the thin one he got from Mihawk. Both of these mistakes were changed in the official volume releases. Now we all know that Zoro decided to return the Shusui Tawano in return for Odin's sword Enma. Well, this was actually foreshadowed multiple times. For instance, in this manga cover for chapter 937, we can see Zoro reading what looks like a treasure map. Well, if we zoom in, we can see the kanji for Enma written on the bottom of the map. But this isn't the only time Enma got foreshadowed. Remember the shrine in the forest of Hakamai where Zoro and Hiori ended up? Well, the name of that shrine is actually Enma. Oda is just on another level when it comes to foreshadowing and hidden facts. The sun god Nika was only briefly hinted at during the Skypiea storyline, long before we ever saw him in Wano. For a brief period, while dancing, Luffy resembled the image of the sun god Nika that was shown to us during the battle between Who's Who and Jinbei. These two moments are nearly 800 chapters apart from each other. Ever noticed how Nami is the only one that doesn't seem happy whenever the Straw Hat's bounty goes up? Well, this is because she's the complete opposite of them. She prefers to live a calm life, where she doesn't have to look over her shoulder for the Marines all the time. Unlike the majority of the Straw Hats who love challenges and fighting, a lot of the Straw Hats even have real life inspirations. I mean, Oda must have gotten inspiration from somewhere, right? Nami is inspired by Winona Ryder. Even some of the other Straw Hats have real life inspirations. Zoro, for instance, is inspired by Francois Lolonet, a famous real life pirate. Almost everyone Luffy recruits to his crew is a random person he's met and was impressed by their skills or forms some sort of bond with them. Zoro, however, is an exception, as Luffy actually went in search for him because of his reputation as an expert swordsman and tried to make him join from the moment he first met him. Usopp's birthday is on April 1st, which coincidentally is an April Fool's Day. This day is perfect for Usopp considering how good he is at lying. In the SBS where Oda usually responds to fan letters and questions, he once stated that Luffy resembles the sunflower which is associated with bringing jubilation. This is perfect for Luffy as he has the devil fruit, Hirohito no Mi, model Nika. Nika being someone who was worshipped by slaves as the sun god, and they believed that he would liberate them from their miseries. Fun fact. Did you know that Usopp's nose is slightly longer than Kaku's? Moving on, did you know that the Ope Ope no Mi, Trafalgar's law devil fruit, is so special that the world government is willing to pay a hefty amount of 5 billion berries to get their hands on it? One of his fruit's abilities make it so that the person could give someone else immortality at the cost of the user's life. Having this in mind, the price tag seems more reasonable. Oda has also said that if he were to choose a devil fruit he could have in real life, he would choose Robin's fruit. Do you know why? Well, his reason was that it would allow him to draw faster. He also stated that he gets about four hours of sleep every night. Zoro is the only pirate among the worst generation that hasn't eaten the devil fruit. Now, a while ago, Killer, Captain Eustace Kid's right-hand man, didn't have a devil fruit either, but he actually recently ate defective smile fruit during the Wano arc, which made Zoro the only pirate in the worst generation without a devil fruit. But what if he did have a devil fruit? Did you know that Oda actually has revealed what devil fruit Zoro theoretically would have? Well, technically, he wouldn't actually have eaten the devil fruit. Instead, it would be his swords. Oda has said that he would give Zoro's swords the fish fish fruit, mythical type model Seriyu, allowing it to transform into a dragon while he himself remained the same. It's pretty cool to imagine him wielding a sword dragon. When I was searching for secrets and facts, I noticed that a lot of locations in One Piece that resembled places in real life apart from the ones I mentioned in my previous video. For instance, Amazon Lily is inspired by the Hanging Temple in China and Mary Gios by this location in France. The most recent location is Wano, which has very heavy influence from Edo period Japan. The Straw Hats are already like a family, but what if they were an actual family? A fan asked Oda what Nami's role would be if the Straw Hats were an actual family, and it turns out she would be the daughter. I mean, I was expecting her to be the mother or something. Now, we all know that Sanji is a massive simp, but he can be quite noble sometimes. In the manga, there's a part where he gets stabbed quite brutally when holding Nami in his arms by Absalom. He throws away Nami because he refuses to let blood get on her dress. In the anime, he got changed to the knife not fully going through him. It's still pretty noble of him though. One thing Dragon Ball and One Piece have in common is that Luffy shares the same Japanese voice actor with a character in the Dragon Ball series. This character is Krillin, and they share the same voice actor, Mayumi Tanaka. 
The real-life pirate Edward Teach is the inspiration for Blackbeard, but he's also connected to Blackbeard's rival Whitebeard. Edward Teach has the first name of Whitebeard, Edward, and the surname of Blackbeard, Teach. Luffy wears tank tops quite often in the show, but I bet you haven't realized that each one that he wears actually has a joke or a gag on them. Oda didn't explain the meaning behind the gags, but he did provide a translation for a couple of them. This one says Egg Disaster, this one Shish Kebab, and this one Champion. Pretty funny if you ask me. Something else you might not know is that Sanji has his own spin-off manga. Yep, the creators of Shokugeki no Soma, Yuto Tsukuda, and Shun Saiki have created a spin-off about his time in Bereti called Shokugeki no Sanji. If you're a Sanji fan, I highly recommend you watch it. Everyone already knows that Zoro is a three sword style user, but tell me why in this scene when he's fighting Helmepo, he has five swords on him. If you look closely, you can see he's holding two swords in his hands and has three swords on his waist. And if you think these are just scabbards, look closer, because the grips are there too. Moving on from Zoro and on to Ace. Have you ever noticed the smiley faces on his hat? Well, there's supposed to be a happy one and a sad one. But in this scene, the animators forgot about that and drew two happy faces instead. I even noticed an animation mistake made during the Marine Ford arc. Remember when Gecko Maria summoned zombies through Aokiji's eyes? If you look closely, you can actually see how the zombies are wrapped in a ton of bandages. You see, this only happens if the zombies have been fixed by Dr. Hogback, so it happening here makes absolutely no sense. Do you remember when Whitebeard got half of his mustache chopped off by a kainu? Well, in the manga, what actually happened was way worse. In the manga, Whitebeard got a portion of his head melted off by a kainu instead of just his mustache. The fact that he's still able to fight after that proves how strong of a pirate Whitebeard was. Fun fact, Luffy's birthday, the 5th of May, is on the same day as the Nationals Children Day in Japan. This reflects his personality as one of his most well-known traits is his childishness. Remember in episode 613 when Zoro cuts Monet? Well, if you pay attention, you probably noticed that Tashiki dropped her sword during this fight. However, she somehow managed to get it back on her waist when she stood up just a few moments later. Now, for probably one of the weirdest mistakes in One Piece, in the Alabasta arc, Crocodile had planted a bomb in the city. In order to save the island, Pell, a palace guard, flies up into the sky with the bomb and sacrifices himself. All the fans thought that he was dead at this point, but somehow he's seen visiting his own grave after Luffy and the crew have left. And there were even more mistakes made during this arc. You see, in this scene, Pell tells the crew that his devil fruit is one of the five flying devil fruits that exist in the One Piece universe. Now, if we were to mention the ones that have wings, there's Marco's fruit, Pell's fruit, the two ones from the Tontata tribe, King's fruit, the angel wing guy, and Monet. Besides these, almost every Logia can fly as well. But this was just one of Oda's writing mistakes. There have been some pretty interesting mistakes in some of Oda's color spreads. If you take a close look at Usopp's bike in this one, you can see how the front of the bike isn't connected to the back of the bike. The mistake on Usopp's bike is pretty hard to miss, but the mistake made on Luffy's face can't be missed. This animation of Kid Luffy looks nothing like he's supposed to, but this is nothing compared to this scene where Nami's eyes are way too far from each other. Now that's just crazy but not as crazy as this plot hole in the whole Cake Island arc. There's this scene during this arc when Luffy is attacking Prometheus, but none of his attacks are hitting him. You see, when Jinbei attacks him using water, Prometheus actually gets hurt since he's basically just a ball of fire. Now fast forward to the Onigashima arc. Prometheus completely dives into the water to save Big Mom without getting hurt at all. But the plot holes don't end there because there's yet another one during Punk Hazard. You see, upon first meeting the dragon at Punk Hazard, the Straw Hats say they've never met a dragon before. Well, they actually did on the Warship Island arc long before Punk Hazard. Something else that happened way before Punk Hazard is this mistake during the Alabasta arc. If you take a close look at Crocodile's hook in this scene, you can see how it's golden. The thing is that he changed it to this poison hook before the scene with the golden hook happened. Moving on to the impel down arc. Do you remember this blue gorilla? Well, his color scheme is pretty interesting for a gorilla. In the opening of this arc, his colors were accidentally wrong. Instead of blue, he was black and white. But the blue gorilla isn't the only one that got their colors messed up because the same thing happened to Robin during the time skip. Remember how this was Robin in between pre-time skip and the time skip? Well, Oda luckily changed her to the Robin we all know and love for the rest of the time skip. Now for one of the more controversial mistakes in the one Piece universe. You see, Vivi's attempting at infiltrating Baroque works is yet another plot hole. I mean, Crocodile was literally trying to take over her country, so surely he should be able to tell that these two are the same person. I mentioned earlier that Sanji has an original design that's different from what he looks like now, but he didn't only look different, his name was also different. His name was originally supposed to be Naruto. Yup, the same Naruto as this guy. Oda decided to change it to Sanji after learning about a new anime that was called Naruto. Do you think the name fits him? Well, the name Sanji actually actually has a meaning. His name translates to three o'clock. This fits perfectly as he's the third son of the Vinsmoke family. But this isn't the only thing interesting about his name, because he placed in third place in almost all of the One Piece popularity polls. 
Something even crazier is that even his birthday is linked to his name. His birthday, March 3rd, is linked to his name Sanji as 3 and 2 can be derived from the name. 3 is San and G is 2. On the topic of the Vin Smoke family, did you know Sanji's royal heritage actually was foreshadowed way before it was actually revealed? During the Alabasta arc, he referred to himself as Mr. Prince, which fits because he's literally a prince. But there are even more examples of Oda's incredible foreshadowing. Because when the Straw Hats get to Reverse Mountain, Zoro says he's never heard of a ship climbing up a mountain. Sanji says he knows something about it. Later, it's revealed that German snails from his hometown have been known to climb up mountains. Oda's foreshadowing truly is next level, but Sanji's cooking skills are also next level. Do you know what his favorite food to cook is? His favorite food to cook is seafood. As for his favorite food to eat, he loves spicy seafood pasta and anything that goes into black tea. His least favorite food is konjac because of its lack of nutritional value. He doesn't like ice cream either, probably because of the same reason. At the end of the Impel Down arc, Bon Clay is seen sacrificing themselves to save Luffy and the other escapees from Impel Down prison. Many thought Bon Clay died, however, this isn't the case. In the manga, Bon Clay actually survived their fight against Magellan and managed to escape to level 5.5 of Impel Down, where they became the queen. Usopp and Robin are the ones that give the rest of the Straw Hats haircuts. Remember in this scene during the East Blue arc when Luffy was drowning and we learned that Sanji had no clue that Devil Fruit users can't swim? Well, a bit later in the anime during the thriller Bark arc, Sanji revealed his passion for Absalom's Devil Fruit and mentions how even as a child he dreamed of eating the Devil Fruit, even if it meant giving up the ability to swim. This means that he knew that Devil Fruit users can't swim after all. On the topic of better tea, there are a ton more mistakes made during this arc. For instance, in this scene, Gein is animated without one of his hands. In another scene during the same arc, Luffy is seen knocked out on the ground with his arms next to him. In the next frame, his arms somehow moved above him. The early design of Sanji looks nothing like he does today, and I mean absolutely nothing. He was originally meant to be a gunslinger. Not only was he using guns, but he also had dark hair and an Old West outfit. The vibe he gave off is totally different. The two girls, Mozu and Kiwi, also known as the Square Sisters due to their hairstyle, are not actually twins, which a lot of people seem to think. They have birthdays on different days. They do look very alike, though. The voice of all things is the ability to understand messages conveyed by inanimate objects and animals that do not speak the human language. The rarity of this ability is absolutely insane, with only four people being confirmed with having it. Those four are Luffy, Roger, Monosuke, and Kozuki Odin. In the One Piece anime, Garp stated that he has eaten 842 donuts without sleeping or taking a break because he was trying to beat a world record. Who do you think holds the record? Apart from having the voice of all things ability, Luffy also recently became a Yonko with a bounty of 3 billion berries. Now this alone is very special, but did you know that he's the youngest Yonko to date and is also the youngest among his peers in the worst generation? Something else I noticed was in the arc when Kabaji was fighting Zoro. When I first watched the anime, I saw that Zoro let Kabaji injure him to give Kabaji an advantage. But when I read the manga, I noticed that it's completely different. In the manga, Zoro injures himself on purpose. He's such a badass. The beef between Zoro and Sanji is pretty well known. Something not as well known, however, is the fact that Zoro has never called Sanji by his actual name outside of filler episodes. Instead, he often refers to him as a dumb cook and other funny names. Don't worry, the name calling is mutual. But despite the beef, they have Zoro still spending quite a lot of time around Sanji. Zoro actually enjoys watching Sanji cooking because he likes his cooking technique. It was even confirmed that Sanji can wield a sword. Who could have known? When I was researching facts for this video, I noticed something that blew my mind away. In the video game Jump Force, if you play as Sanji, you are unable to fight against a woman. If you try to fight a woman whilst playing as him, hearts appear. He has to be the biggest simp in One Piece. Sanji is also one of two Straw Hat members with a real-life inspiration. According to Oda, many fans thought that he was inspired by DiCaprio. But in reality, Sanji was inspired by this guy. His name is Steve Buscemi, and he's an actor. The other Straw Hat inspired by a real-life person is Zoro. And Sanji is the only Straw Hat member that has biological siblings. Luffy and Ami both don't have any biological siblings, leaving Sanji as the only one. What's interesting is that both Luffy and Nami are on better terms with their family than Sanji is with his. In this scene in the anime where Luffy pokes a hole in his straw hat after Nami fixes it. She gets mad and yells at Luffy, but in the manga, things take a rather violent turn. She doesn't only yell, but instead takes a needle and pokes Luffy in the eye. She can be pretty scary sometimes. At least Luffy managed to pay her back by saving her in the Syrup Village arc. 
Luffy managed to catch one of Jango's chakrams in his mouth last second and crush it, but in the manga, the chakram hits the back of his head. The Marine Fleet Admiral Akainu is known to have the Devil Fruit with the strongest defensive abilities. Oda has even stated that if Akainu was the protagonist of the show, One Piece would end within only a year, which is crazy to think about. Also remember how Zoro traded his Shusui for Odin's sword Enma. You see, when he got the sword, it fit on his waist perfectly, but the thing is, Odin is more than double the size of Zoro, and when he had the sword, it fit him perfectly as well. So either the sword shrank, or Oda made a tiny mistake. Also, Sanji's nationality would be French. Oda has revealed some of the other Straw Hats' nationalities as well. For instance, Zoro is Japanese, Luffy is Brazilian, Nami is Swedish, Robin is Russian, and Usopp is South African. Something else I noticed was that in the French dub of One Piece, Sanji actually has a different name. In the French version, his name is Sandy. I'm not really sure why they changed his name, but Sandy isn't that bad. Although One Piece movies for the most part are filler, in One Piece film Z, Kuzan is shown having lost one of his legs, as well as having received severe burn scars on his body after his fight against Akainu. This is most likely canon. I find it hard to imagine they'd give him such drastic changes just for the movie. These facts were pretty cool, but I've done so much research that I even found some changes to everyone's favorite arc, Long Ring Long Land, with this very normal character. In the fight with Luffy, Foxy manages to fall right on his own spike trap. In the manga, the spikes went completely through him, but in the anime it was changed to him being inches above the spikes. Cartoon physics can be pretty crazy at times. Remember how Crocodile only has one hand? Well, apparently the animators forgot about that in this scene where Crocodile is lighting his cigar. But this isn't the only time someone forgot about this because even Oda did in this manga chapter. Luckily, Oda fixed the mistake later. But Crocodile isn't the only one that somehow regenerated his arm because Shanks did too. In this scene when Ace was visiting Shanks, he's animated with both his arms. Last time I checked, Shanks lost his arms when Ace and Luffy were kids to this Sea King. But animation mistakes are not the only errors made because there are a ton of spelling mistakes as well. You probably noticed the tribute Law has to Kotozon on the back of his jacket, but he seems to have changed it in this scene to Kyozon. I don't remember anyone named Kyozon in One Piece. Even the Marines managed to make an error on their clothes. On this Marine cap, it says Marn instead of Marine. Maybe that's why this Marine is looking so shocked. They even managed to misspell the name of an island. Yep, that's right. This log pose was supposed to spell Marvel, but was misspelled to Merville. I wonder where this log pose would take you. Oda has revealed to us in an interview that there'd be a character with an eye patch in the final arc of One Piece. Out of all the censorships at One Piece, the most obvious one has to be the middle finger. In the manga, a lot of the characters just seem to love pointing their middle finger. However, this all changed in the anime. One of the most infamous moments is in Chapter 500, where Laws points the finger at Kid. Pretty funny if you ask me. Now this next fact might surprise you, so get ready. We still don't know what Luffy's actual dream is. You might think becoming the Pirate King is his dream, but that's only a stepping stone to achieving his actual dream. Everyone Luffy has told his dream to has burst out laughing. All we know is that his dream is the exact same as Goldie Rogers' dream. What do you think it is? I mentioned earlier that Luffy was featured in a magazine, but that isn't the only place where he's been featured. For instance, he was also featured in the New York Times at one point. Another thing that Oda has said is that Luffy would be his ideal child. He stated that he wished all children could be like him and never grow up, even though he has said some pretty cool lines here and there. How cute of him. The Going Mary's funeral had me in tears. Do you know who else also started crying during Mary's funeral other than the Straw Hats? That's right, Oda. I guess even the creator can cry at his own drawings. Now you may be wondering how Luffy can be so lean when he eats so much. Well, I have the same question. Luckily, Oda is here to answer it for us. He answers that he moves around so much that it's hard to gain weight. You probably remember the tragic scene when Ace passed away in the arms of Luffy and Marineford. Well, if you thought you were the only one having nightmares about it, then you're wrong. Oda has stated that Luffy has had constant PTSD-type nightmares ever since Ace's death. However, he's never told anyone in his crew about it. And we've got to start off with this scene where this dumb little kid gives himself a scar under his eye. In the manga, this was shown way earlier than in the anime. In the anime, this was only recently shown in filler episodes, but in the manga, it was shown in the first chapter. I wonder why it didn't get shown to anime-only watchers earlier. There were three people in the One Piece world that Luffy fears. These three people are Garp, his grandfather, Ace, his brother, and the scariest of them all, Nami the Navigator on his own ship. We all know what Oda's drawing of Sanji looks like, but have you ever seen creators of other manga and anime draw him? For instance, this is how Sanji looks drawn by Shun Saiki, the creator of Food Wars, and this is how it looked like drawn by Boichi, the creator of Dr. Stone. Even the creator of Death Note is drawn Sanji. Pretty cool, right? But this is nothing compared to the time Zoro got even more lost than he usually does. In chapter 698, Zoro somehow had Luffy's large egg-shaped scar on him instead of the one he got from Mihawk. The Zoro mistakes don't end there, though. There were a ton more. 
Like this one where the scar on Zoro's eye was drawn on the wrong eye. If you thought that was bad, then check out this chapter where Oda totally just forgot to draw the scar on his eye at all. Although it's never been stated in the show, it's pretty obvious that Luffy's favorite color is red. Oda has even confirmed it. I mean, he wears it in every situation he gets. The coat he wore on Punk Hazard, the red sweater he wears a lot, and even the traditional clothing he wore on Wano were colored in red. However, he isn't the only person with a birthday on May 5th, because Demario Black, also known as Fake Luffy, was also born on May 5th. What a crazy coincidence! The original Whitebeard Pirates Jolly Roger You see, in the early days of One Piece, during the Alabasta arc, we first saw the Whitebeard's logo tattooed on the back of Ace. And it didn't look as you might think. This was how the original logo looked. Don't worry, in Japan this symbol isn't as dark as it is in the West. Oda later changed it to this. If you think this was dark, then let me tell you about the one time Big Mom ate her own mother. There's a tragic incident in Big Mom's backstory that no one talks about. On her 15th birthday, Big Mom ate a ton of food as usual, but was still hungry. So she accidentally ate her own mother, thinking she was food. Incredible how Oda has managed to hide some pretty dark secrets in the show. Speaking of Oda, we may need to pray for his safety. He works seven days a week and only gets three hours of sleep a night in order to produce one manga chapter per week. He even claimed that if he were to die someday soon, he would want to die while he's writing the One Piece. His dedication is truly next level. Now these facts were pretty crazy, but if you want to see something even crazier, check out this video.